One of the big questions in science for the last 20 or 30 years, at least really, has been what happened to the dinosaurs? Where did the dinosaurs go? And, and, and is there something that, that we might be worried about? Now, the sort of most popular theory at the moment is that a, a large object, a, a piece of space debris, an asteroid or maybe a comet, hit the Earth 65 million years ago, changed the climate so dramatically that the dinosaurs and many other species at the time um, became extinct. Now, the dinosaurs are the well-known example of a species of, uh, of life that's no longer here. But huge amounts of, of, of plant life and animal life, stuff that lived in the sea, on the land, in the air, from very small plankton-like creatures all the way up to the, to the sort of T-Rex scale creatures that we know about, disappeared. And life on Earth changed very, very dramatically as a result. So it may be that astronomical events, impacts from asteroids and comets, can have a dramatic effect on not just the solid Earth, just the, the actual physical um, planet itself, but also on life itself on the planet. So what we think happened was an object maybe 10 kilometers in diameter, a huge lump of metal or rock or ice, came out of the sky at anything between 11 and a half kilometers per second, which is about the minimum speed something can hit the Earth, up to anything like 60 kilometers per second. To put that into context, a bullet from a gun is traveling at roughly two or three kilometers per second. So these are objects which have a huge amount of kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is, is something we're familiar with. Big, fast things hitting us knock us over. Small, slow-moving things don't have much of an effect. The equation for kinetic energy is a half times the mass of the object times the velocity squared. So big objects, massive objects that are traveling very quickly, have a high velocity, have a lot of energy. And in this case, we're talking about flying mountains, effectively. We're talking about huge objects, 10, 20 kilometers in diameter, with trillions of tons of mass, traveling at enormous speeds, gigantic bullets, if you like. When something like that hits the Earth, it digs a crater, and the crater is roughly 20 times the size of the object. So a, 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 diameter, a 10 kilometer diameter object will leave a 200 kilometer diameter crater. And a crater that size has been found in an area called Chicxulub in, in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. And the rocks there are 65 million years old. So that crater is exactly the right size uh, and exactly the right age to be at least part of the cause of the mass extinction of the dinosaurs. But that may not be all that happened because we know at um, that time, in 65 million years ago, the end of the Cretaceous period, Earth was undergoing a huge amount of volcanic activity as well. So it may have been a, a double whammy. It may have been volcanic activity that was ongoing over hundreds of thousands of years and then one, possibly several large impacts from space debris that really kind of killed off the atmosphere. The planet itself survives. A, a crater 200 kilometers across is big for a human scale, but the planet's 13 and a half thousand kilometers in diameter, so it's not a very big hole in the ground. But what it does is it has a dramatic effect on the atmosphere. It pumps huge amounts of dust into the atmosphere, chokes off the sun, um, cools the planet down, you get acid rain, you get all sorts of nasty stuff happening. Um, for periods of decades, maybe even centuries afterwards. And the sort of creatures that survive an event like that are small, warm-blooded, live underground, eat anything. So mammals, effectively, were very well equipped to survive the mass extinction that killed off the larger, um, sort of slower-moving, extremely energy-requiring creatures like dinosaurs. So we think that's what happened to the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, but looking back in the geological record, there's evidence for maybe half a dozen events like that in the last 600 million years. So we think it isn't a one-off. It wasn't just one impact that killed the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. There have been a number of mass extinctions over geological time, five, 600 million years. The biggest mass extinction ever seen on Earth was about 250 million years ago and marked the end of the Permian, the beginning of what we call the Triassic era. And not very exciting name, but it's called the Great Dying. I mean, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Something happened to the Earth. Life on Earth was dramatically changed. Many, many species were killed. Lots of stuff died. Not long after that, the dinosaurs began to evolve and then became one of the most successful species Earth has ever seen, ruled the planet for about 150 million years, effectively. So these mass extinctions, and we think most of them, probably not all, but most of them are caused by these impact events because they are a, a natural thing that happens in the solar system. They are probably telling us that life on Earth and maybe life on other planets, if we ever start to look for life or we, you know, we ever start to find planets that look like Earth, it may not just be a, a function of survival of the fittest in the sort of Darwin model. It may also be a, a, a survival of the luckiest, because if your planet happens to be hit by something particularly big, it can wipe out life all the way down to the bacterial level. So your whole planet is, is, is wiped out regardless of, of how flourishing life was at the beginning of that period. So mass extinctions are a, a natural phenomena in the solar system. They may well be. They probably are a natural phenomena in other planetary systems out there around some of the extrasolar planets that we're now discovering. Uh, at the moment, there's not a lot we can do about them. We don't have any mechanism for um, stopping an object on its way towards us, although there have been a number of conferences and papers published about theoretical ways of diverting asteroids. 
What's clear is you don't blow them up because all you do then is you convert a bullet into a shotgun blast. You're still dead, it's just a lot messier the other way around. So what we're trying to aim to do, I guess, is, is to push these things. We, we give them a little nudge over a long period of time, gradually change their orbit so they're not in the same place at the same time as the Earth. At the moment, we don't have any mechanism for doing this, but like I say, there are conferences that have discussed it, there are theoretical papers that talk about how it can be done. We just haven't actually ever tried it yet.